Hey everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch. I'm really happy to have you here with me today. As promised in my last video, I am going to share with you how I make enchilada sauce. I already have the onions chopped up here along with the garlic. I have a bunch of red peppers over here that I'm going to throw in the oven and just quickly roast up just to bring out the sugars a little bit. This recipe is from the Ball Book of Canning and it does call for chili peppers. Our family doesn't really like super spicy food, so I am going to add a little bit of red chili flakes to it, but I am not going to use chili peppers. Instead, I am going to use red peppers here. I'm also going to share with you making sloppy joe mix for canning as well as a green tomato curry, which is a recipe from Rachel from that 1870s homestead. And I apologize about the flies that are buzzing around my camera. It's part of farm life, <laughs> we have flies. Fortunately, it is going to start getting cold in a couple of weeks and then we won't have flies flying around the kitchen anymore and I'm very much looking forward to that. It's about one of the only things about the cold weather that I really like. So the first thing I'm going to do is start sauteing up these onions. Whenever you're cooking with onions and garlic, you always want to, cut, uh, to cook up your onions first because they tend to um, not burn quite as easily as garlic does and then throw your garlic in once your onions are just about fully caramelized. And then I'm gonna throw all these red peppers onto a cookie sheet and throw those in the oven and roast those up. So these are some of the peppers from my high tunnel that we chopped and froze. So we'll throw that in there. We'll bake that at 400 and just keep a close eye on it. I already have all of the tomato sauce that I'm gonna be using for this recipe done. Um, we did that earlier today, so those are just cooked down tomatoes. We ran them through the food mill, and now we're cooking them down on the stove. And I've actually decided to transfer this big pot into the roaster oven because it's starting to um, burn on the bottom of that just because of all of the weight of all of those tomatoes. So I'm gonna get that transferred over right now. Now we'll likely not get to everything today, so it'll probably be tomorrow morning before we get on with the rest of it, but I do wanna get as much of the prep done as I can. And I'm gonna run this elderberry syrup that we made in the last video down to the fridge. Now that it's cooled off all the way, thank you, yes, we can just put This recipe calls for four large onions and three cloves of garlic. So we have all those chopped up and ready to go in there with a couple of tablespoons of olive oil. So that pot just about filled up my 22 quart roaster oven and I'll just let this cook down. I'm going to take six cups of tomato sauce out of here. So this recipe actually calls for six cups of chopped tomatoes. So this isn't exactly what it's calling for, but it should work just fine. And you know, I'm kind of thinking maybe I should double this recipe. Let's double it. I have to chop up some more onions. So we'll grab six more cups. In there. Okay, chili powder, cumin. Red pepper flakes, salt, and that's about it. Two tablespoons of chili powder. I'll be adding four. That's a lot of chili powder. And then four teaspoons of salt. four teaspoons of cumin. And now I'm going to add my garlic to my onions. Also, this calls for cayenne pepper, but I'm going to use some red pepper flakes instead. Just, hmm, maybe that many. <laughs> Okay, then we're gonna take this gorgeousness, which I'm gonna need both hands for, our caramelized onions. The 
peppers are smelling good. The peppers are all nicely roasted, so I will dump them into here. Next, we're going to put the enchilada sauce into the blender, blend it up, and then cook it down. Whenever you're using a blender with hot stuff, just make sure you don't fill it up too high so it doesn't explode out the top. Because I had used that tomato sauce that was already cooked down quite a bit, this is actually already nice and thick, a pretty good uh, consistency for enchilada sauce. So I am not going to cook this down a lot more. When we do our big pantry video, actually I'll probably break this up into two videos. We'll do the pantry tour and then I'll do a pantry kind of organization and how we organize our pantry and how we keep it stocked up but we are actually at the point of needing to do our once every six months stock up of our um, kind of our pantry basics that we like to have in our pantry all the time. And one of the things that we ran out of was brown sugar. We just ran out of brown sugar today, so I have to wait to add the brown sugar to this recipe until Dan gets back from town with the brown sugar. I think it's probably the first time that I have run out of brown sugar in four years or so. It's very unusual for me to run out of things like that. I really try to keep those kinds of staples always stocked in my pantry. So now I'm just gonna do a little bit of a tidy up again, cause that's just what happens this time of year is I'm forever making a mess in the kitchen and cleaning up said mess. This sauce does smell really good. It looks really good. Oh my goodness, it tastes really good. That is absolutely delicious, that sauce. That is so good. Okay, next up is some kombucha. And then I got straight into getting all of the green tomatoes chopped up for both the green tomato curry and for the green tomato and apple mincemeat. I chopped all of the tomatoes up into about one inch size chunks and then the mincemeat quite a bit smaller than that, although I could have gone even smaller than that. I did do the pieces a little bit too big, but it still turned out all right in the end. At this point in the video, my camera decided to have a little bit of a glitch and my microphone did not record the sound, which is why you hear me voicing over this small section of the video. While I was getting all of the green tomatoes chopped up, I was also frying the onions on the stove with a whole bunch of butter to add to the curry as well. I mixed those ingredients together and then added all of the seasonings. First up was a heaping tablespoon of salt along with some curry paste. I actually used hot red curry paste here, which I thought might be a little bit too spicy for us, but it turned out to work just perfectly. Things that you'll see me add here, some cumin, some coriander, and a little bit of turmeric. I don't really love the flavor of turmeric. I find it kind of bitter. So I just add enough to color the curry, that nice gorgeous yellow color. I did also end up adding a bunch of curry powder to this as well. Once I got this all mixed up and tasted it, it did not have nearly enough seasoning. So I actually quadrupled all of the seasonings I added and then added some brown sugar. The recipe does call for white and brown sugar, but I like brown sugar better, like I mentioned before. So I got that all mixed up really well. And then I put it on the stove and started to cook it down. I cooked it out down for around 45 minutes or so. We also chopped up a whole bunch of apples. I enlisted a little bit of help for that and then mixed the small chunks of green tomatoes that we had chopped up and the apples all together for the mincemeat. And while all of this was happening, I also was frying up four pounds of ground beef to use as the base for the sloppy joe mix. 
I've changed things around a little bit. I took the tomato sauce that was in the roaster oven and I have canned that sauce. So that is in the canner right now. The extra sauce I threw in with the ground beef for the sloppy joe mixture. That's just sitting over there. I have the onions frying on the stove over here and the peppers are all ready to add in to the sloppy joe mixture as well. I have all the apples and the green tomatoes in the roaster oven just because I had so many of them I couldn't put them on the stove and now I'm going to start adding a bunch of spices into this and we will turn you a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. So I am going to add a bunch of raisins to this mixture. It already looks yummy. I will link the recipe that I'm using as kind of the base for what I'm doing here in the show notes below. But I am just kind of playing around with it. Adding as many raisins as I think looks good once I get this all mixed together. I've added the amount of raisins that I want in there. I'm going to add some apple cider vinegar. About, I don't know, that much. And now we will add all our spices. So I have a little bit of this pumpkin spice, pie spice that is going to expire. So I'm just gonna dump all that in there. And a bunch of ginger. A whole bunch of cinnamon. A little bit of nutmeg. A touch of cardamom. And, oh, I have some allspice already open over here. A little bit of allspice and a touch of cloves. And then I will add the sugar to this and give this a good mix and see where we're at for flavor. Okay, now we have all of that. It already smells so good. Like really good, oh my goodness. Yes, honey? Your eyes are watering, what from? The oh, from the onions that I'm frying up? Wanna you wanna wear goggles? I'm going to have them in the sauce in just a minute and then it shouldn't be too bad. So we'll add a little bit of lemon juice. Okay, I don't have any apple juice, so I'm going to add a little bit of applesauce. That was actually Jack's idea, and it's a good one. Let's add, see if we can add a little bit of the juice from the bottom of this into there. That was a really smart idea, Jack. And a little bit of applesauce in there. Actually, we may as well add all of it. Oh, that looks great. <laughs> looks adorable. Nice job. I think I'm gonna add just a touch more brown sugar because it actually calls for white and brown sugar, but I prefer brown sugar. Need a big spoon. Where is my big spoon? Give this a good mix and then I'm going to start cooking this down. And once it is cooked down, I'll taste it and see what else we need to add, but it sure smells good. It looks good too. Okay, let's get this on here. Ugh. Now onto the sloppy joe mix. Put all these away. Going to add our onion and our peppers. Okay, now onions. And a couple cups of ketchup. One, two, and we may as well just empty that one out. 
salt. A tablespoon of salt. It called for some water as well, so I'm just mixing the water in with that because my mustard is pretty much empty. And some pepper. Mix that all up and see what we get. I feel like this needs some tomato paste in it. Let's try the taste. Definitely needs some tomato paste. Enough sweetener though. This is sloppy joe mix and it's good. Just needs tomato paste. I've talked about how I don't make my own tomato paste. I buy it in big gigantic um, number 10 cans and, and then I just divide it up. Um, into portion size amounts and freeze it. Okay, let's take a couple good dollops of tomato paste out and add it into here. So a slight change of plans. I have decided <laughs> that I am actually going to use some of this for dinner tonight because it is really tasty and I will try canning up a small batch of it just to see if we like it canned because it does have to go through the pressure canner and I have not pressure canned ground meat before. So before I do a huge batch of it, it makes sense to do a small batch and give it a try. So I think that's what we're gonna do. So the great thing about that is now supper is done. Just have to make some buns. Next up, we are going to jar up the enchilada sauce and get that into the canner. Let's do some of these little jars. Do any of you guys have a thing for canning jars? <laughs> because I really do. I would say at least 75% of my jars are secondhand and I'll get them off Facebook Marketplace or Kijiji. And usually the older jars are better quality. They're thicker and they're also prettier. Like look at that pretty jar. So pretty and and I love this old ball jar. So beautiful. And I actually have a thing for the really simple jars as well. So let's jar these up. How many jars can I fit into that canner is the question. Well, I guess we'll just see how many we have and go from there. This sauce, I know I've raved about this sauce, but honestly, it is so good. So this one is a pressure canned recipe as well. So I'm not gonna worry about the extra citric acid. I have a feeling that this is going to be one of my new favorites. We'll see how it tastes after it's pressure canned though, because pressure canning does really alter the flavor of things. Now that that's jarred up, we'll come over here and jar up the curry. Salmon. Wanted to show you this beautiful bracelet that my daughter is making. Isn't that beautiful? How many beads was it? 495. 495 beads. Gorgeous, sweetie, that looks fantastic. Mom. Well done. I said to Sequa she should sell it for a, for a cent per bead. A cent per bead? Yeah. Well, what about her time though? Her time is also valuable, right? So her plan is to make bracelets all winter and then have a stand at the farmer's market and sell them next summer. I think it's probably going to need a little bit of extra liquid. Let's see. Oh no, there's liquid forming down there. 
Well, one thing that you do need to keep an eye on if you're using a roaster oven is that you stir it regularly because it does get really hot right up on the side and things can start burning to it, or um, sticking to it and then burning. Oh my gosh, that smells good. Oh, it smells so good. Doesn't that smell amazing? Okay. I've just taken the tomato sauce out of the canner. I'm filling it back up again so that I don't burn it like I did last time. And then I will get the curry on. I have the enchilada sauce in the pressure canner. And then I am going to can up a small batch of this really, really good sloppy joe mix. And the rest we're gonna use for supper. Now it's basically a waiting game for everything to run through the canner. So we are going to have lunch. We're having salad and the leftover bean wraps from last night, which is great because I was kind of racking my brain to figure out what we were going to make for lunch. And then I remembered we had these leftovers, which is fantastic. So we're going to do that. Let everything run through the canner here. And then I'll show you what we end up with when we're all done. Okay, we ended up having to take a trip to town to run some errands. So we're back now and we have all of this canning done out of the canner. The pressure canner is full. I'm going to empty that in just a minute. And now we are going to get all of the mincemeat jarred up and canned, and then we'll be done for the day. Okay, let's get a ladle here. Okie dokie, this mincemeat smells really amazing. Although I think that we could have chopped everything up a little bit smaller because it's pretty big. I think this would be super good on pork chops. Yummy. It smells so good too. It does. No, sweetheart, no movies. You may definitely play reading eggs. I don't know, hun. We're going to use the uh, pressure canner for a steam canner so that I can run to it once. First, we're just going to heat up the sloppy dough mix. Excellent. Yeah, there was a stash. Thank you. This looks really pretty. going to be one more canner load of the mince meat and then I'm going to be done for the day. So I'm just going to get everybody fed and run these canners through and then I'll bring you back and show you when it's all finished. We are now at the end of the day and all the canning is just about done. It's not quite done. I do have four pints of the mince meat in the steam canner but then it's done. And so all together we have 67 jars. Let me show you. We ended up with seven quarts of the curry and four pints, nine pints of the enchilada sauce, 18 tomato sauce, seven pints of sloppy joe, and then 20 pints of the mincemeat. And I have a little bit left in the roaster oven that we are going to use for breakfast. We're going to put it on our oatmeal in the morning. And that is it. Feels like a very successful canning day. We are just about done with the tomatoes. I thought for sure we would finish with tomatoes today, but we still have, we just have these two boxes of ripening tomatoes and then the tomatillos down there. I'm not sure what the final tally is yet for the number of jars that I did of tomatoes, but when we do the pantry tour in a couple of weeks, I will count them all and I'll let you know how much we actually ended up with out of the high tunnel this year. I hope you guys enjoyed coming along with me today and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye everyone.